OK, uh, good afternoon, uh, members of council, members of management team, the special guests in our public gallery today. Welcome. Um, it is uh, 1206 PM on a beautiful day, September 12th uh, in Stephenville, Newfoundland. I would ask the member of council uh, that we approve the agenda as circulated. And now. Or that would be second. Just, uh, oh, just support the agenda. Yeah. Call the order. So moved. Moved by Councilor Tom O'Brien. Second. Second. Council Maurice Hines. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'd also like to welcome. We have 15 attendees. Sorry, 16 attendees now attending via electronic media. Welcome to our public meeting of the great town of Stephenville, Newfoundland. Because we never know where somebody's logging in from. A lot of places on this planet. Really. Anyways, uh, item number two is we respectfully acknowledge the town of Stephenville as the ancestral homeland of different populations of indigenous people. We also acknowledge with respect the rich histories and cultures of the Beothic, the Mi'kmaq, Innu, and Inuit of the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. OK, now we're going to get to the agenda item number three. Approval of the agenda as circulated and presented in front of us today. Member of Council move. We stuck, we've done that. We did call the order. OK, I don't know. Why. Mm -hmm. The approval of the agenda is uh, on minus says for September the 11th. Oh, typo. Thanks for picking up that noted. OK, can I get somebody to move? In that case, I'll move. OK, Councilor Murray signs second. 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 Councilor Myra White, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Carry. OK, approval of the minutes. Let me put on my glasses here. Uh, be it resolved to approve special public meeting minutes of council dated August 28, 2024, as circulated by our town clerk. I would ask the member of council we approve those minutes. Moved. Moved by Councilor Laura Elward. Second. 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 Councilor Myra White. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. I'd also like to recognize that we have two members of our council that's not with us today, and I don't believe they're. Uh, Joining us via Zoom, uh, that would be one the mayor going partway through the meeting. She may attend. Yes. OK, so Deputy Mayor Susan Fallow uh, may be a little late joining our meeting. And also uh, Councilor Darren Roberts, I believe, is out of town. Item number two, 4.2, uh, be it resolved to approve public meeting minutes of Council dated August 22nd, 2024, as circulated by our town clerk as a member of council to move. So moved. Moved by Councilor Myra White. Second. Second. Second, Councilor Maurice Hines. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contramine? Carried. OK, are there any matters arising from those minutes, whether they're special or the public meetings? I see no matters addressed. We will move on. OK, we have a very uh, Great honor to uh, do a proclamation uh, today in our town chambers. And uh, we also uh, have special guests, uh, Kristen and Dean Budd, in recognition of their son, Connor. We often refer to Connor as uh, Connor the Great because he was so uh, influential in our community. Um, he taught us a lot about courage. And we are very grateful. So what we're going to do now, with Nadine and Chris, we're going to actually go to the proclamation. And thank you so much for being here and for being with us for this. Thank you, sir. I guess we'll get the special treatment. <laughs> yeah. So uh, proclamation September 2024 for the month, Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Whereas the month of September is recognized nationally as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Whereas the most recent data shows that cancer remains the leading cause of non-accidental death in Canadian children. Whereas an estimate two thirds of childhood cancer survivors experience at least one chronic or long term side effect from their treatment. Whereas the awareness we create for childhood cancer will help fund further research 
to improve diagnosis and treatment in children and continue to decrease the death rate. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Tom Rose, on behalf of Council, the Stephenville Town Council, do hereby proclaim September 2024 as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in the great town of Stephenville. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mayor Rose, if I might yes. say something. Um, when we were approached by candlelighters, Newfoundland and Labrador, about the proclamation signing for today, um, they asked if we could find a local family to come in and do the signing with you. And of course, we immediately thought of Chris and Nadine, of course, Chris being part of our 10 family here, and everybody knows Connor. And um, we thought as an initiative, you know, of them coming in today, if staff or us as friends and family could do something as an initiative in Connor's memory, that it would be uh, very appreciative of us to do if you guys were willing for us to do it. And um, through some jigs and reels, we came up with the thought of doing a pin in Connor's on. So we actually have two pins that are being developed. Uh, one of which I have here today that has been developed and nobody here has actually seen the pin yet, um, but it is Team Connor, number 32, his number. And um, I'll pass it around for uh, everyone here to look at. And of course, we would like to present you guys with the first one. And um, part of the, uh, you'll notice on the pin is actually Connor's goalie mask. It is a picture of Connor's actual goalie mask. So um, I don't know if probably I will have this up for people to look at. Um, there are two different designs. Yes. One is coming. It's really nice. And that will also say Team Connor, number 32. And this is the pin that we have. And our thoughts were that uh, the pens, pins would be sold. A couple of local uh, businesses have told us that they are willing to sell them in their business, uh, that being Arlum's and Debbie's video. And um, so they're not available yet, but um, we will make it known when they are available. And there's also an email address that's set up teamconnorpin at gmail.com. And uh, there will be a poster that we've designed that will get posted as well as part of this initiative. And all of the proceeds from the sale of the pin would go to a charity of your choice. So I hope you guys are okay that we did that initiative and uh, it's very to do it. And uh, of course, you know, as it's mentioned, you are part of our town family. So. So, Marilee, I, I just want to say on behalf of the council and the candlelighters and our team that uh, put this together, we want to thank everybody. But I guess uh, with your honor, I'm going to pass over the first pin with your permission. Uh, just you can do it my way. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, the very first one. Thank you so much. It's very, and thank you, uh, everybody, for approving that. Uh, because anything to do with Connor, I'm okay with. <laughs> <laughs> and we are too. Yeah. And I have to say, just so the public are aware, we did kind of have to bring Dad in on what we <laughs> planned to make sure that uh, it would be okay. So Mom is just hearing about this today. Uh, we did inform her before the meeting, just so yeah. she had a little bit of time to prepare for it. It's nice having uh, intel within the in the. Yeah. <laughs> But I know, Chris, I think you just wanted to maybe announce the charity that would be receiving the proceeds. And well, for us, uh, you know, uh, Bay St. George Sick Children's Foundation would be one of the, definitely one of the main ones that would uh, would receive any benefits from from the sales of the pit. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, it's just tremendous how much work uh, and service and support that they provide to uh, to a uh, family. It doesn't have to be as tragic as our families could be something minor. But the thing is, the Bay St. George Children's Foundation have always been there for this community. 
the sad thing is, you know, when we spent time in St. John's with uh, with our families, uh, you know, with Connor, uh, when he was going through his treatment, uh, we found out very quickly that not all communities uh, have a foundation like this in there. And, you know, they, they some people struggled uh, while being out in St. John's with their families. Uh, all ops to Long Dollhouse were made in. Uh, making it livable for people that, that weren't away, you know, that, that lived away. They had to go to St. John's for her sick children uh, at the hospital Janeway. But uh, but with uh, with a foundation like facing George St. Joseph's Foundation, you know, there was there was no worries that we had to uh, had to think of while we lived there. So they're very helpful as well, not only just helping you financially, but they're helpful um, just emotionally as well. They're very caring and they took care of so much for us. You know, things that I couldn't even fathom to try to think about, they took care of it or made sure it was taken care of. And unbelievably so, there are many families in Stephenville as well as the surrounding areas that utilize um, Bay St. George the kids. So, you know, anything that goes towards or goes to Bay St. George. It helps so many families. And you never know when it can happen. You never know when it can happen to a family member or a cousin, a friend, anything. Um, you know, that day that we were told that news, that was the most devastating thing ever besides his passing. Um, and the fact that people were there to help us through it and get us through it. Um, it, it did everything for us. It was, it, I, I can't even, I wish I could give more and do more um, for Bay St. George and everybody that's helped us. Um, but if this helps in some way, this is what I'd like to do, yeah. Well, so there will be a 500 of each design available. And uh, as I mentioned, we've had some great support from the business community and I'm sure from the community in general. Um, but we'll uh, look forward to uh, getting this launch. That's right. Uh, for me, uh, I just want to take this time. Uh, you know, we've, we've been on this journey May of 2021. And, uh, you know, Connor has passed the almost a year now. So we're still kind of on, on, on the journey. But uh, I just want to say uh, thank you to the town. Uh, not, not just the town, but as an employer. Yeah. Uh, for for me. That's what I mean. yeah. uh, how much the town has been there for us. So you guys have been amazing and supported us all the way through, um, through the worst times, the darkest times, and even now. So um, thank you guys so much. It uh, means so much. I can't go into a whole lot. I can say so much, but I can't even think of it right now. <laughs> <laughs> We've been there, but always going to be, and we're still there. So, whatever we can do. It, it just means a lot to us, like, you know, to go be with Connor and, uh, you know, we were in St. John's and not had to worry about anything. Like, we met people and, you know, maybe dead couldn't be there in St. John's, but mom was because dad had to still work. Yeah. But I didn't have to worry about that. It was nothing like that. Town Steve Bill, there was council, uh, management, my co-workers, uh, you know, they were all there for us. And so we could leave at any time to be with, uh, be with Connor. And you don't know how much we appreciate it. And it's, and it's, and, and you know, it's not only that for that, that, that fact, but uh, yeah, you can represent public works. Uh, anybody that worked in the town, or not, they were all there for us. So in some capacity, one way or another. And it was hard for us to talk about it, but I, I couldn't leave this, this meeting today without saying how much we appreciate all the support. I had to go out once without Chris and he ended up coming out so many days later, which was a surprise to me. And I mean, you do what you got to do as a parent, you do what you have to do. But because of all the support, uh, we were able to be together for 99%. Of it. And that one time that I was alone uh, with Connor getting chemo, 
I didn't realise how much of a dream and how uh, exhausting and stressful it was until he walked through those hospital doors. And I just... And anyway. the other thing was the cobra. Andrew Philip drove me that day, that morning, out to, and then came back the next day. So it was something like that, 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 that was yeah. Not everybody is that fortunate. I met a lot of moms had to do it alone because the dads had to yeah. go away and work. So the fact that Chris and I could be there for each other, we had different duties and just the support alone mentally and for coming. We, you know, we had to leave our daughter many times, but she came out too. But having us together was huge. I can't even, it's, it's, I can't even put it into words, um, the support that two of us gave each other for our son. And for him to see that, that we were there and a team. Is uh, and that's because you guys were able to do that for him. Yeah, and there's no doubt that having both of you there help on and on his journey. Yeah. You know, but there's so many behind the scenes yeah. things that you don't even realize, and uh, even now, but uh, it's just amazing. You know, my work was supportive as well, and but I had to go off. I had to. Uh, I didn't have that option wasn't possible, but of course it was. And that's all because of the town and the employees and the firefighters and everybody. Yeah. Well, thank you guys very much. I know this is not our usual proclamation signing today, but uh, we thought that today would be a great day to launch it. And we really appreciate you guys. Thank you. So we we, we and think so that you guys thought of us to have us here for this. Thank you. And it's a special honor for Team Connor. So yes, for sure. Thank you so thank much again. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, I had the pleasure of meeting Connor. Yes. One on one. Yeah. Not too many. You know, one on one. And we, we talked and we joked. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I went to visit him, uh, give him his following treat. That's right, it is. So I'm so glad to be able to get a call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your coming and all that stuff. And Appreciate it. This, yeah. this, it. If this is the, you know, you know, a little bit of helping, babe. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. It sounds on for us. Okay. Well, you know, you're, you're on board. We know your 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 coworkers and everybody, and you're all valued employees at the town. Yes. So thank yeah. you for your service too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll give you one today and another day. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Okay, so uh, we'll continue. Uh, that was a great uh, proclamation signing. Uh, Team Connor will be uh, honored in, in memory of this proclamation as we move forward. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to our chair of finance so for the finance committee, item number seven, Councilor Myra White. <laughs> finance committee, item number seven. September the 9th, 2024, and the following items were recommended for council approval. 7-1, accounts payable. Be it resolved to pay accounts payable dated September the 12th, 2024, in the amount of $196,582.65. I so move. Move by Councilor Myra White, second. Second. Second, Councilor uh, Elder, question. And Mayor, just to show people get an idea of where all that money goes to, uh, in this report for Abby Doss, which is our maintenance or our 
Wastewater system sewer system 22,263 Just read the big ones. The Ukraine supply, your real current one, that's, the, that's where we are piping valves and ethic, the uh, stuff, public works to, to keep our water system that's moving 14,953. The uh, daily payment, $7,000. That's material to fix potholes. The uh, architectural service, for seven, make you 761. That's it. Architectural engineering service, basically for the project for the YMCA bill. In that regard, there's the uh, general marketing limit. That's our gas and fuel. Uh, uh, for August, 10,386.19. The uh, uh, UAP, 7,041.05. That's the uh, uh, parts that the uh, uh, branch would use to keep our uh, uh, vehicles going. Uh, Western Hydraulic, again, that would be parts for vehicles, 5,078. Western paving, 12,819.63. That's uh, uh, in some of the fix, fix, fix some models around town. And then we got $65,200.28 for the Western Regional Waste Management. That's what we have to, to pay to, to drop off the garage that we pick up by people with doors. So that, that's just a big one. So you would be one idea of where. $196,000 are gone. Yeah, the Western Western Regional Waste Management, that was in two invoices for two months. Yep. Two okay. Thanks for the That's question. why it's so high. Absolutely. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, uh, item 7-2, expense checks. Be resolved to approve expense checks for August 2024 in the amount of $423,399.09. By so moved. By Councilor Myra White, seconder. Second, Councilor Laura Elward on uh, question. Again, again, Mr. Mayor, just to so people get an idea, it was $423,000. It was uh, uh, $86,173.65. We received from General Tanner, that's the income tax, CPT from employees. Uh, there's $5,338 for the center she mentioned, which we hosted at the uh, leak. There's $25,000 for the beautification meetings. That's part of the annual grant that we put into beautification. And it's 39,103 Again, that is uh, uh, engineering services and their architectural services for the YMCA building project. Then there's $80,000 $80, for the regional aquatic center. I mean, that's part of our uh, operating grant that we give the regional aquatic center on a yearly basis. Then there's another 52247 uh, for receiver general. Another big one is 37814.60, which is the special payments to our pension fund uh, to keep it solvent. And new fan latent power from July is $29,660. So again, that just gives people an idea where $423,000 is. Okay, thank you very much for that, Council O'Brien. All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Item number seven. Uh, excuse me, Councillor Waite. Uh, I am the councillor representative on the foundation, so therefore I'm not in conflict. I just represent the council as a member. Uh, the foundation is a member of council. No, I mean, no. Yeah. I mean okay. if you're a council, you're no, no. in conflict. Okay. It's a request for a donation for the St. Sir, Sir Thomas Roddick Hospital Foundation. Be it resolved that the town of Stephenville contribute $1,000 to the Sir Sir Thomas Roddick Hospital Foundation Annual Radiothon. I so move. Moved by Councilor Myron White, seconder. Second, Councilor Maurice Hines. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Item 7 4 Approval to Submit Canada Community Building Fund Application. Be it resolved to submit the capital investment plan to the Department of Municipal and Provincial Affairs for Canada Community Building Funds in the amount of 
$494.20 for street paving on Georgia Drive to the intersection of Pennsylvania Drive. I so move. Second. Uh, uh, just a little clarity on that one. Uh, it is a section of Georgia, but it's from Montana to Pennsylvania. Just, just for clarity, yeah. it's not, it's not right from Carolina. It's only a section. Okay. Okay. okay so clarity on that. Uh, we have a motion seconder. Yeah. Second, Councillor Laura Elwood. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carry. Item 7.5, approval to submit Canada Community Building Fund application. Be it resolved to submit the capital investment plan to the Department of Municipal and Provincial Affairs for Canada Communi Community Building Funds in the amount of $161,033.65 for street paving from the intersection of Main slash Queen Street to the intersection of Whites Avenue. I so move. Move well, by Councilor Myra White, seconder. Second, Councilor Maury signs. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. Is there anything late on finance? Uh, no, there is not. Okay, thank you very much for that, Councilor Myra White of uh, finance. Uh, item number eight now, I'll turn it over to our Chair of Planning and Traffic, Councilor Laura Hilbert. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Number eight, uh, Planning and Traffic Committee. The Planning and Traffic Committee met on September 9th, 2024. And the following items were recommended for council approval. Number one is 52 Main Street, outline, outline planning permission. Be it resolved to approve outline planning permission to operate existing business as existing non-conforming with parking permitted at location 28 Main Street. Pursuant to Town of Stephenville Development Regulation 11, Section 3, Schedule D, off street parking requirements. Um, I believe that's the um, subway, new subway building, uh, Matt? No. Business doesn't All right. For the bar. Oh, that's for the bar. Right, right. That's for the new owners that's taken over the bar. The, for information for the people of the town, Stephenville. Uh, I so move. Moved by Councillor Laurie Elwood, seconder. Second. Second, Councillor Tom O'Brien. All in favor? Aye. 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 No. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. Item two, 149159 Main Street Outline Planning Permission. Be it resolved to approve outline planning permission. To consolidate two parcels of land, 149 and 159 Main Street, 161 to 163 Main Street, as per Town of Stephenville Development Regulations. I so move. Moved by Councillor Laurie Elwood, seconder. Second. Second Councillor Myron White. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carry. Number three, issue request for proposal, 147 Carolina Avenue, be resolved to issue a request for proposal for the sale of the development of. 0.51 acres of land at 147 Carolina Avenue. I so move. Moved by Councilor Tom O'Brien. Second. Second, Councilor Tom O'Brien. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. Number four, approval to enter into agreements with Quest Canada. It resolved that the town of Stephenville participate in Quest Canada's Net Zero Community Accelerator a program. It's Get over to the page here. I so move. Moved by Councilor Roy Edward, seconder. A second this, and we could have an explanation for the uh, people who are listening. Wait, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, on this one, the uh, West Canada has selected Stephenville uh, to be one of the uh, participants in this net zero community accelerator program. It's a no cost to the town of Stephenville. Uh, and our town will now be a part of 15 towns throughout Canada that will participate in uh, the setting of the uh, net zero community uh, initiatives in the development of building codes for the future on a net zero basis. Um, any of the costs associated with our participation are to be covered by the uh, the group, and uh, it's it's an exciting 
uh, piece that we are um, uh, very excited about. The uh, planning and uh, economic development uh, part of the town have uh, uh, have this one along with the, the one that one to follow. Of course, Steveville will be leading the initiatives for net zero buildings, as well as uh, initiatives for uh, uh, community sustainability. So you can, uh, and this one, and with some uh, pleasure that neither of these will cost us uh, anything other than the time of our people who are participating in these initiatives. So it's. Uh, Tremendous yeah. opportunity, both of them. I think everybody's glad to hear that there's no cost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, finance, just saying. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Aye. Carry. Uh, number five, approval to enter into partnership agreement with ICLEI. Be it resolved that the town of Stephen will enter into a partnership agreement with ICLEI, local government for sustainability for building to net zero. Uh, what's that? Like? Cohort. Cohort. I so move. Moved by Councilor Laura Edwards. Seconder. Second. Second, Councilor Myra White. All in favor? Aye. We carry. Okay. And that's it. Uh, not that I'm aware. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, item number nine. We have no bylaws or regulations today. I understand. Uh, okay. Item number 10. Unfinished business. Anybody uh, got anything unfinished that they'd like to speak on? I got I, I got one. I thought it was appropriate that uh, I would kind of restate a proclamation that we uh, had October 26, 2023 last fall. So last fall, uh, the annual general meeting of the Francophone Association took place in, in Stephen Ball. We were working since pre-COVID on our Acadian culture. And I just wanted to restate what that proclamation said because we have some new counselors, new management team, and just to give an understanding of, of, of this file and where it's heading and it's part of our, when we look at our murals, it, it's the Acadian center mural with our Acadian culture. Interesting, our Canadian culture, uh, prior to the US Air Force and the Corps of Engineers arriving here, uh, many of the Acadian families on the base area where we're now at the town steamboat, they all had wind turbines on their farm properties that created electricity for their farmhouses. And uh, that's in the archives of Memorial University. So I just wanted to restate this. Uh, uh, in honor of the, the meeting, uh, the town of Steeple makes the following proclamation. This was done October 23rd. The town council of the town of Steeple recognizing its rich Acadian and French heritage and recognizing the 50th anniversary of the Federation of the Francophone de Terre-Neuve et du Labrador, declares its intention to make steps to incorporate elements into our town. These steps will include working with all levels of government to enhance access to French language training to our residents at all ages. And I've just recently uh, seen where the College of North Atlantic is offering French language training again. They've done it in the past, it's so nice to see. Uh, to start the process of transitioning to bilingual street signs, that's ongoing with our economic development officer. It's so nice to see that moving forward. To work with the Federation de Francophone de Terre and de Labrador to uh, locate an acceptable space to host the Francophone School and Cultural Center and daycare. So that's something that our management team is working on. And to continue to work closely with the Federation de Francophone the Tadanu on projects of mutual interest. So I just wanted to restate that because sometimes we we have files that are moving and it's just nice to keep the community aware of these files and how important they are. Okay, item number 11, anything under new business? Uh, I don't know if it's new business or unfinished business, but back uh, uh, a number of meetings, uh, that I, I brought up the, uh, some of the mapping, which is in the our road plan that Upland's done for it, and the, the mapping uh, shows a whole lot more uh, land owned by the airport than the airport actually owns. And we were going to look for corrections to it. Yeah, I haven't I haven't received 
No, we've uh, just just to report our GIS uh, coordinator has uh, looked at the mapping that's in the uh, report, which of course, even though mapping associated with the airport may indicate that it's a lands as a part of the airport, there's a very clear delineation between lands owned by the town and lands owned by the airport that were part of the agreement. And uh, so Mark has worked on that to a point of taking any uh, pieces of the land that were carved out at different times over the course of, uh, uh, like I know the Flying Club is one that was mentioned, part for Waste Management is another that was mentioned, uh, <clears throat> and just ensuring that those were properly done by the legal counsel for uh, when, when the agreement was drawn up. Now, our law firm that we use for matters like that in uh, Stuart McKelvey, uh, I made contact with them last week as a follow up to go over a couple of things, including that particular issue to make sure that there's a an appropriate matching and so we were not party to the sale of the airport and therefore we were uh, an advised party and we were consulted but we were not a part part of that agreement so what we sought is the, the legal representative who handled it for the Stephenville Airport Corporation just to ensure that our records match the records that they are and if there are any errors and omissions those will be uh, there will be a request to correct any yeah. any issues, but in my understanding right now, there are no definite issues. It's just a matter of ver making sure that our records properly match what's in the registry of deeds and, and that sort of thing. So we, we, we are acting on it and uh, that and other matters associated. So. Mm -hmm. I, mean, is, I mean, I would estimate 250 acres or more uh, uh, out on the ramp area, which is included with Stephen Wood Airport on this mapping, uh, uh, it basically leads people uh, uh, down the wrong path if they're yeah. looking at the, the map. Yeah. And, the, uh, uh, and that would lead into uh, uh, rural energy and all the discussion about lay down area and that type of thing. Would, I, I, would, I would think at this point in time, with the, some of the uncertainty that's been raised around the airport in recent weeks, the rural energy. Uh, would have some concerns regarding the lay down area. So, so any, has anybody reached out to World Energy to let know what land we have available? Well, our, I believe our management team have met with World Energy and clearly defined that uh, from where the racetrack was, that fence line, to the airport's fence line is clearly the town of Stephenville's property. We hold the deed through uh, transition from Newfoundland Labrador Housing. To get uh, uh, get the release of mortgage, but it's clearly they know that we own that, and, and that would encompass, like you just said, well, 100, 200 acres. Yeah, away. and there's that that one piece, and also other pieces which are uh, held in trust through Newfoundland Lavender Housing uh, uh, on the the project site, and uh, those are the subject of very thorough discussion between our our manager of planning and development and uh, world energy and we've also had numerous meetings with Newfoundland Library Housing on means by which we can expedite matters related to that but also on uh, exploring uh, safeguards uh, so to speak on uh, protecting the town's interest in those yeah. discussions as well. Uh, just for clarity too there is uh, inside the airport's fence property there's one piece there's a couple of pieces of lands at the town we own 13 hectares uh, on the button of uh, runway 09 uh, by our uh, Abbey Dosford land system for expansion. So we own 13 hectares there, but we also own a half acre of land uh, down where one of the old uh, hangars were, uh, where we were looking at building a new fire hall. There's a 100 by 200 foot footprint that we own inside the fence, which is adjacent to where the fire hall is. So we do own two pieces of property inside the fence. Yeah, because we, I mean, we, we purchased the purchased the extra land from the, 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 the airport back a number of years to go because we set as a part of the it, it, ongoing funding. Yeah, I mean, because we, we, <laughs> we, we saw at some point our waste water system was going to have to be expanded. So yeah, 
Yeah. It was a good move. Okay. Just got to get some of the mapping corrected. Okay, thank you very much for that, Councillor O'Brien. Uh, I just wanted to mention uh, both myself and uh, our CAO and uh, Councillor Maurice Hines and Mary Lee. Uh, we were at the 9 11 uh, commemoration of oh, Councillor Myra White. Thanks for that. Yeah, he there. Yeah. And uh, up between the Legion, uh, our uh, first responders, uh, uh, the parish, St. Stephen's Parish, and the Knights of Columbus, we had a wonderful event last evening. And we actually had recognized last night our Stephenville Ground Search and Rescue, along with Bearsville Search and Rescue. And uh, sometimes it's things you learn that Bearsville probably has one of the smallest brigades when it comes to ground search and rescue, but their area of coverage is the biggest in the province. They go right from Isle of Moore right to Pinchcott. Really? And when you really think about it, Cornwall at least should at least come as far as Galance. That would make geographical <laughs> sense. But you'd almost think a town like Port of Bass is robust as it is. Uh, they should have their own ground search and rescue established because Bearsville Brook to Isla Moore to Burnt Islands is a long haul, mm -hmm. especially if you got wreckhouse winds. Yeah, right. And at least two and a half hours. And you're on the end of it, and not necessarily in the center. So that's uh, yeah. mm -hmm. something that we hope that can develop, you know, voluntarily. We can yeah. say from more in the center of the area. And maybe that's something that we could show in our leadership and supporting our local uh, stigma ground search and rescue. We could meet with the town council in Port of Ass and help them and. You know, because you get started in small steps, baby steps, and you could grow it. Mm -hmm. So anything else before I, I call for adjournment? No, no. we, we no. have uh, speak on business. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll turn uh, this uh, over to uh, Councillor Maurice Hines, who's going to read a statement based on uh, Recommendation from uh, FCM, our uh, federal partner, on uh, how local officials management handles harassment uh, that is actually brought forward to council and management. So I'll, I'll turn over the floor to you, Councilor. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and before I would read the statement, uh, recent events and, and probably not so recent has really had the council uh, rethink a number of things and we're going back to uh, the Canadian uh, Federation of Municipalities and some of their resolutions, and uh, I'm going to share that with you. Uh, this statement is from the town of Stephenville on harassment of elected officials and staff. The following resolution was passed at the Federation of Canadian Municipalities at their annual general meeting regarding the harassment of elected local government officials. The Federation of Canadian Municipalities, from here we'll call FCM, calls on the federal government to work with provinces, territories, and local governments through the FCM to identify and implement measures to protect elected officials, their family members, and staff, especially women, members of the black and rationalized communities, the 2SLGBTQ2I, A plus individuals, persons with disabilities, indigenous people from harassment, intimidation, and threats thereby reinforcing a unified front to safeguard democracy. The town of Stigmo stands firmly with the call to action, and we echo FCM's message to emphasize that harassment of any kind towards our elected officials and staff is unacceptable. These harmful actions do not just affect individuals, they erode the foundations of democracy and a sense of community that we hold dear. The town of Stephenville firmly denounces any form of harassment directed toward each and every one of our elected officials and staff. Over the past several months, social media has been a significant driver of negative commentary, and this has led to a profound impact, not only on our workplace, but also on the personal lives of those who serve this community. This behavior constitutes a form of bullying, and in many cases, these actions constitute defamation. Defamation of character occurs when someone makes a false statement about another that harms their reputation. It takes two forms. Written defamation, such as false statements published in articles, social media posts, emails, and other forms of writing. Spoken defamation, 
which includes false statements made verbally, often in person or through broadcast by television or radio. Defamation is a criminal offense. We wish to make it known to the public that the town of Stephenville cannot and will not support or tolerate this type of treatment. Each and every one of our staff members are selfless, hardworking individuals who dedicate themselves to the well-being of our town. Many of these employees have devoted their entire careers to serving their community and take immense pride in their work. They work with the best interests of Stephenville in mind, often going above and beyond to ensure our town thrives. Beyond their roles, our employees are people, individuals with families, feelings, and personal lives. They deserve to enjoy fulfilling lives outside of work, surrounded by respect and positivity. It is disheartening to see that kindness and empathy are becoming scarce in our community. We must remember that every member of our town, including those who serve it, deserve respect and compassion. Let us not forget the true meaning of community and the importance of treating one another with dignity and understanding. We call upon every member of our community to take a stand against negativity and actively support the town of Stephenville. In putting an end to this harmful behavior, let us come together, not just to reject harmful actions and comments, but to embrace kindness, empathy, and collaboration. By working together, we can create a stronger, more supportive environment where everyone's efforts are respected and the well-being of our town is prioritized. We have so much to look forward to in Steve Mill's future, and now more than ever, we need the support of the entire community to make these great things happen. There has never been a more important time to come together to unite behind our shared goals to foster cultural respect and cooperation. By joining forces, we can achieve a far more positive and meaningful results ensuring that the true spirit of our town thrives. Let's lift each other up and work together to build a bright future that we all want to see for Stephenville. The next statement is going to correct some misinformation that was recently on some uh, social media platforms. The town would like to address and correct some inaccuracies and misleading information circulating in the media. Here are a few examples of comments that give an unfair representation to the town's business. The Town Council has approved a water study required by the Water Resources Division of the Government in Newfoundland and Labrador. For future development, that may affect town-owned, crown-owned, private property, including Hillier Avenue area. This study will help the town make informed decisions about land development and zoning, ensuring proper use of water resources for industrial, commercial, and residential purposes. Regarding the paving of Main Street, the town clarifies that the project is not delayed due to funding issues. The project is approved and is currently awaiting tendering process from municipal affairs and further input from consulting engineers. We expect the project to be awarded this fall and construction plans to start early in the spring of 2025. The town has committed funds for our share of this cost sharing project. The town also clarifies the borrowing of funds for new equipment purchases. Borrowing allows the town to spread out the cost over time, like construction, paving, and repairs, rather than paying for all of it up front. All purposes and projects are subject to approval by municipal affairs, ensuring the town's budget is used efficiently. The town of Stephen remains fully committed to openness and transparency. We encourage any resident, I'm going to emphasize that, we encourage any resident with questions seeking clarification on town projects or purchases to reach out to us directly. This is not in here. We'll find out what's really happening, and that's important instead of rumors and gossip. All you can do is by calling, requesting in person meeting with management, emailing, submitting comments through our feedback section of our website. We are dedicated to ensuring our residents are heard and will make every effort to respond promptly and efficiently as possible. For the people who are listening, I, I hope you take that to heart. Uh, our town employees work hard, and I think they deserve our respect. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for that, uh, Councillor Maurice Hines. I'd just like to also uh, say that uh, it's so great to see this declaration being made by the Stephen Town Council. Uh, but 
I got to give some credit to uh, our management team, Matt and Candace, who went to Calgary and got informed and educated on this file from a pan-Canadian perspective with the FCM. That gave us, uh, I guess, the foundation about realizing what we need to do at our level. So it's federal, it's provincial, it's municipal, and we have a right to be respected. Uh, we are open and transparent. And uh, I wanna thank uh, Candace and Matt for the work, along with Bill and our full management team. Uh, hopefully that this will uh, settle things down and people will take it to heart because it's, it's hurting the community when false comments are being made. And uh, we don't want our community hurt. We, we want to strive and we've never been at a better time. We're, we're in growth potential. There's optimism, there's hope. Uh, we live in one of the greatest countries in the world. We are defined by our charter of rights and freedoms. And the veterans who protected our freedoms, current and past. So on that note, any comment from any councillors? I'm just going to add to that. I'm, I'm an elected official. I decided to run. And I'm, I'm open to people say, I really dislike what you said. I really dislike how you voted. But I think our staff, who are diligent workers who simply implement the policies and procedures laid down by council to make it a better community, deserve better. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, 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 uh, I'm, uh, I support fully what uh, was read by uh, Morris, Councillor Maurice Hines, um, but I will talk on uh, the hospital issues. Simply, some people around think that you can just get a specialist, especially the specialized doctors, just like that. That's not the way it works. You, you, you have to go through the process. And having been around the healthcare since for 30 odd years, I've seen many, many, and so Councillor O'Brien being on the board, he's seen many, many specialists and family doctors come and go over the years. And was nothing to do with Somebody did that or someone got them, got them mad and they left or whatever. A lot of specialties that come to our hospital over the years, uh, they, they, they come in for maybe five years and they do their Canadian qualifications and then they move on to a bigger center. We've been very fortunate in having doctors that have stayed right through till retirement. One of our anesthesiologists, Dr. Kurana, remember he's passed on. He was with us from day one and stayed with us. Uh, so I say to people that I talk to, re the recruitment people at Western Memorial are the ones that do the recruiting for us. Our committee, the West Coast Healthcare Committee, that was formed in 2003, uh, trying to save our services. We've had a lot of successes as. Councillor O'Brien will attest to that. And uh, I remember Dr. Ginge being on the board, uh, the chair of the board one time, and we had a meeting in probably here and a good meeting. And he said to me on the way out, he said, you know, he said, we've you've come a long way. He said, and we've come a long way with you because he said, if it wasn't for your committee, we wouldn't be as successful as we are now. And we've gained a lot of successes by getting uh, doctors to come out and use our, our operating rooms. And they do, we got endoscopy uh, suites here that they can come out and use. And I've preached to them over the years that, why don't your physicians come out and use our ORs? They're in there, you know, look, uh, looking for OR time. You just don't go in the OR and do surgery for a hip replacement or a knee replacement. You got to consult with all the people that are involved and, and to get it done. and. You just don't go say, well, you know, I want OR time next week at a certain time. That's all done in a process. So for people that think that you can take a, a magic wand and get doctors to come here, like our psychiatrist left with Dr. Varmick left, that was her husband, the surgeon, and then we lost two people. 
an anesthesiologist and a psychiatrist. Now, I know there's been, uh, they, they are recruiting for, for a surgeon and we do have one now on the ground. I haven't met them yet, but also psychiatrists, they've been also doing that. I do know that Western Memorial, it took them almost 10 years to get ear, nose and throat specialists. So you don't get doctors anywhere, it doesn't matter where, to come here unless you go through the process and they 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 stay if they stay long you know if they come and, and like we have our one of our internists here that's been here since 2005 so another one stayed 2013 so uh, from we left here uh, a couple of years ago he was here about 11 years so you know they stay and they some don't stay so there's a lot of things I could be here all day talking about the reasons why but all I want to say to the people out there is that as a committee of the healthcare action committee as chair, we are, we're always doing something behind the scenes. We're always in touch with the, the powers that be, the manu management at Western Health. We're always in touch with these people and even with the Minister of Health sometimes. So I want to let them know that we are doing something. And so is the recruitment committee and so and the town council as a whole as well have been supporting our committee in that role. And we meet regularly with the management from Western Memorial. I want to let the uh, people out there know I, that, I right? I emphasize how well it has worked, and I have evidence to prove. Uh, from the Action Committee to the Hospital Foundation, to council, especially our aggressive uh, recruitment and retention packaging that we put in coming out of COVID. Remember, it was a health care crisis, and we made the move. But you can go right across this province, right across this country. And there's been emergency rooms that have had to shut down because they had no staff. That has not happened in Stephen. We have never been shut down. So that's a testimonial on the supports of this community, of the healthcare professionals that we have. And it's so nice to see now we do have a modern hospital, but now we're getting a modern clinic, medical clinic, a full wraparound service. That will be a catalyst to help support our Sir Thomas Roddick Emergency Hospital. So we are making significant gains, but the testimonial is we're not like other communities that have had to shut down their emergency department. So credit to council, credit to yourself, your committees, and to all the staff of Sir Thomas Roddick. And our radio sign, by the way, is coming up. Yes. On the 26th. We will be on the air from two, two to six, and Port of Basque will be on the air from, uh, nine to one, and it's going to be held at the hospital this year. So anybody wanting to make a donation can come out in the morning as well as the afternoon, but their names will be read in the afternoon from two to six. Okay, we want to thank you for that. If there's anything else before I call for adjournment, I'd like to say one little comment. Uh, we as parents leaderships, uh, being members of groups, uh, we have to provide leadership for our children that are coming behind. I think the fact that we have to say, we have to ask people to tone down what they're saying about people and making people feel bad. You also have to realize that your children are, children are watching, and I think that you have to be the leader and the example for your children, because I don't think you would want that to happen to your children when they get uh, at the age or being involved with things and to be kind of tore down, right? So uh, I think that people should really think about what they're doing. Well, Bob Dylan said it right, teach your children well. Yeah. Right. On that note, can we get a so we'll motion by Councillor Tom O'Brien? <laughs> Councillor Maury signs seconder. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned at 105. We want to thank uh, Mr. Frank Russell.